Hey, I'm Tara Jensen from the Leighton Hills District for Leighton City and Leighton Hills Steak. I'm part of the emergency preparedness team and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about long-term food storage. So food storage, a lot of times when you think of long-term food storage, you think about just storing like wheat and rice and potatoes, but really you should only store what you're going to eat and eat what you're going to store. So really for long-term storage, it should be an extension of your three-month supply. So I put out several things and ideas that I wanted to give you so that you can get a um, just some more ideas maybe for your long-term food storage. So the first place that you want to start if you want to um, increase your probably your long-term food storage is going to providentliving.org. Um, this is the church's website and it has all the things that they offer at their church can at the church cannery. So we have a cannery just over in Kaysville and it's simple and you can get a lot of things. So some of the things that you can get there are dehydrated foods. So things such as apples, um, spaghetti bites, you can get rice, wheat, um, beans, all kinds of things, oats. And they come in number 10 cans, so they're really great and easy to store. Or you can buy the 25 or 50 pound bags. Um, it's a little more economical to buy the bags and then you can store them in um, five gallon buckets. So you wanna make sure you get a food grade bucket um, I really love these lids. They're called Gamma Lids. And I'll just show you really quick how they work. Um, they just twist off, and so it's really easy to get into your bucket without having to use the lid grabbers. So these are really great for, we store these in the bottom of our pantry for rice, wheat, again, all of those things. Um, if you are not familiar with how to use wheat, um, or barley or oats or whatever. Again, don't put those in your long-term long -term food storage. Um, I, so in long-term food storage, you wanna have things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's kind of what I've put out here. So I'll kind of start over here with breakfast. Oats are a great thing to store for breakfast. Um, pancake mix, um, this is another way you can just get little packets for these. Um, juices are really great to store for um, long term and, and for breakfast. We also like to store protein shakes. These are great for the kids for school. They can take and it just is a meal replacement, something you can take. But again, you can store 10 of these and just um, rotate those through your, your food storage. Um, another thing they offer at the cannery is the non-fat dry milk if you were unable to get milk. This is a great option. Um, Kids don't always love this because it tastes a little bit different than regular milk. So store some Hershey syrup and you can make chocolate milk and they'll eat it right up. Um, lunches, if you're making bread with your long-term food storage, um, with your wheat, you can store some peanut butter, jam, honey. Um, our kids love these, they're probably not the best, but they're an easy, easy thing, ramen noodles. Um, make sure you're storing lots of condiments. Um, our kids love ranch. We've probably got about 12 or so of those in our pantry because anything that you can make, rice, casseroles, anything, if they can put ranch on it, they're gonna eat it. So make sure you store lots of condiments. Um, I was talking with April the other day, April Parker, and she said, as long as I've got chocolate, so make sure you've got some cake mixes and, and things for your long-term food storage. Um, couple other items and then I'll go to the dinners. Storing meats, I don't know if a lot of people think about storing meats, but um, you can pressure can meat. So this is some chicken that we've done recently. We have elk meat, um, you can get tuna, salmon, little shrimps. So it's really important to store some meats, especially if we lost power and you lost the things in your freezer to be able to put them and pressure them in a, in a jar is a really good idea. Also remember to store spices. Um, you wanna be able to season all that food. Um, so come over here and we'll, I'll show you, finish up with just some dinner ideas. So these are things, again, I just pulled out of the pantry. Um, when, remember what I was saying about store what you'll eat and eat what you store. So um, here's some meat that we've pressured. This is some elk meat and some potato pearls. So you. This is pressured ready to go. So you can dump this in a, in a pot, add a gravy mix and your potato pearls and you've got a meal in, in no time. Add a, a vegetable and a fruit. Um, again, here's some of the canned chicken, add some Alfredo sauce and noodles, some corn and peaches, you've got a meal. 
Um, spaghetti sauce is a really good one to store because you can make little pizzas or um, all kinds of things. But store a variety of noodles. I've kind of put some of my favorites. I love these oven ready lasagna noodles because you don't even have to um, pre-cook them. Fun noodles for kids, any, any kind of just different types of noodles. Also, soups are so easy to store for long term and get a variety. Um, it's something that's simple. If the power was out, you could easily just open up a can and not have any of the prep work. Um, another thing a lot of people say, well, store beans, but we don't really know how to use them. So a simple meal that we like to make is taco soup, where you just dump everything in. Um, we even have pressured um, ground beef, and you can literally dump everything in a in a pot and have a meal quickly. So um, my um, hopefully you've learned something or got some ideas of some things for long-term food storage tonight. Um, I would encourage you to look at providentliving.org and to stop over at the Kaysville Cannery and um, get some ideas and, and stock up on your long-term food storage. Thank you.